Okay, much of the non-calculator portion will be some pretty um, basic things with logarithms, so it will be switching forms and so on. So let's say I had log base 3 of x is equal to 2, right? Would you be able to switch forms? It would be 3 to the 2 is equal to x, right? Or if I had 5 to the x is equal to 4, would you be able to switch forms? That would be log base 5 of 4 is equal to x. So the key to doing this is always like whatever your base of your logarithm is ends up being the base of the exponent. So it's 3 raised to the other side of the equation equals what's left, the x. Okay, so 5 to the x is equal to 4. Okay, when in doubt, you can always think about some um, easy equations. So let's say I have log base 10 of 100, right? You think 10 to some power gives me 100 left, right? It would be 2. So that's kind of a one to keep in the back of your mind to kind of make sure that you keep those things straight. 10 to the 2 is equal to 100. If you had done 10 to the 100, right, that's going to be something huge. We would never talk about like 10 raised to the 100. Um, 10 to the 2 makes more sense. Okay, so let's say I give you some problems. Um, and I say, well, what is log base 10 of, right, 100,000? Okay, so 10 raised to some power gives me 100,000. Okay, in cases like this, when you have base 10, you really just count the zeros. So it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros, so your answer would be 5. So remember, when it's base 10, it may not say 10. It might just say log. So if I had log of 100, right, that's when you can draw in a little 10, and you can say, oh, it's 10 to the 2 is equal to 100. Okay, same thing with other bases. It doesn't always have to be base 10. So what if I had log base 4 of 16? Really, you're thinking 4 to some power gives me 16. What does that number have to be? It would have to be 2, right? Or log base 2 of 8. 2 to some power needs to give me 8. It needs to be 3. Okay, so these are all basic things that would definitely be on your non-calculator test. Okay, so let's kind of mix it up and make it a little bit harder. So what, what if I had a problem where it was like, so what if I have log base 4 of 8 minus log base 4 of 2, okay? This would end up being log base 4 of 8 divided by 2 because the rule um, where if I have two logarithms and I want to combine them and they were, they were separated by subtraction, I combine them with, the di with division. That is the rule. So my 8 divided by 2 is going to give me 4, so I have log base 4 of 4, and then we think about it, 4 to some power gives me 4, 4 to the 1, so your answer would be 1. Okay, likewise we had some rules that are pretty easy if you just think about switching forms, like this. So what if I have log base 5 of 1? Okay, what we're saying is 5 raised to some power, so you can even make it an x if you want. 5 to the x is equal to 1. All right, think about powers of 5. 5 to the 1 is 5. 5 squared is 25. How are we going to get 1 out? x would have to equal 0 in that case. 5 to the 0 is what gives you 1. So anything where I have, like, I could do log of 273 of 1 is equal to x, right? x would equal 0. 273 to the 0 is what gives you 1. Okay, so these are all pretty basic things that would be on the non-calculator section. So... Likewise, we have cancellation rules. What if I have log base 9 of 9 to the 2x minus 1? Right? Log base 9 and 9 cancel each other out, right? So you would end up just getting 2x minus 1. Okay, this kind of brings us to our, our uh, exponent rule. Now, we talked about in class why we can pull this to the front. So let me kind of do a refresh. So what if I had log base 4 and I had 3 to the 5th, okay? What that is is log base 4 of 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, right? Which we know is log base 4 of 3 plus log base 4 of 3 plus 5 times, right? Because we just had that rule 
which is called the product rule, where you can um, break apart your logarithms. So if I have multiplication, I can break it into separate logarithms with addition. We went in the, in the reverse before. Remember, we went from here five times, and we combined into things like that. Okay, so what we really have when we write this out five times is five of the log base four of threes. Okay, which means that when we started with, where did it go? This, all we did is we took that five and we moved it to the front. So if you have log base four of two x minus one cubed is equal to six, you can easily do this without a calculator because you would take your three and you would pull it to the front. So you'd have three times log base four of two x minus one is equal to six. You could then divide, oops, got one random equation here. You could then divide by three everywhere And you would get log base 4 of 2x minus 1 is equal to 2. In other words, 4 to the second, right, switching forms, 4 to the second is equal to 2x minus 1. And 4 to the second is 4 times 4, so it's 16 equals 2x minus 1. So you end up getting, add 1, 17 equals 2x. So 17 over 2 is equal to x, okay? These are the types of things that I would expect you to know how to do. Now the very last thing I want to talk about is what if I give you a couple values. I give you log of 3, and let's see, log of 3, let's say, so I did that on my calculator, but it's 0.477. So let's say I give this to you on the non-calculator non portion, and I give you log of 12. And log of 12 is 1.079. Okay, if you had this, I could easily ask what log of 4 is, I could ask what log of 36 is, I could ask what log of 1 fourth is, right? So let's talk about how I could ask that. Think about how 4 is related to 12 and 13. 4 is 12 divided by 13, or not 13, 3, 12 and 3. Okay, so this means that I would have log of 12 minus log of 3. You're using that subtraction rule. So this then would be log of 12, which was 1.079, minus log of 3, which was 0.477. Right? You could do this without a calculator. You could subtract. You'd get 2, 0. 10 minus 4 is 6. You'd get 0.602. That's what log of 4 is. So you can check with your calculator if you want to, right? 0.602. It works out. Okay, likewise, if I wanted log of 1 fourth, well, 1 fourth is 3 divided by 12. So that would be log of 3 minus log of 12. That actually ends up being negative 0.602, right? So log of 1 fourth is negative 602. Think about why that is. Log of 1 fourth is log of 4 to the negative 1. Pull the negative 1 to the front. Negative 1 times log of 4, so it's negative 1 times 0.602. Okay, these are, this is how logarithms are all related. So what if I asked you log of 36? Okay, log of 36 if you had 3 and 12, would be log of 3 times 12. So when I separate into two separate logarithms, it's log of 3 plus log of 12, which I gave you both of those values. So I said log of 3 was 0.477 and log of 12 was 1.079. And you add them together. So yes, I know you guys have trouble doing this. It's been a long time. You line them up. 1.079.477, line them up and add. So I get 16, I carry the 1, 15, carry the 1, 5, 1, 1. 1.556. And you can check if you want to. If you do log of 36, you do get 1.556. Okay, so those types of questions could also be asked on the non-calculator calculator exam. So just be kind of looking at things like that and thinking, 
oh, she's not asking me to do this multiplication, right? I'm not asking you to multiply. It's not anything crazy that I'm asking you to do without a calculator, right? Remember your rules of logarithms.